and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Obviously, as you know, today is the beginning of the season of Lent. And Lent is those 40 days before Easter, not counting the Sundays. Traditionally, Lent has been a time for us to focus upon our need for repentance because it was for our sins that our Lord Jesus Christ came to this world. It was our guilt that he removed, and it was our punishment that he received. This year, we want to focus upon the fruit of the Spirit during this season of Lent. Paul describes the fruit in Galatians chapter 5. And he states that there are nine parts of the singular fruit. Please note that that word is singular. So he's not talking about nine different fruits, plural, but that there is only one fruit and there are nine different parts to it. What that means is that you and I cannot pick out one or two or even a few of those fruits and focus on them and feel as though, yes, we're doing a good job. No, the fruit that the Spirit produces covers nine aspects. The one fruit consists of nine different parts and items. And they're all the working of the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul says in this section of Galatians, so I say, live by the Spirit. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. In other words, Paul is encouraging us to live by the Spirit. Living by the Spirit is important. That verb, live, is present tense, which means that we are to be continually living every minute, every hour, every day, all the time in the Spirit. The Spirit is important. It's an important ingredient in our life. Because without the Spirit, there is no life. Without the Spirit, there is no living. And without the Spirit, there is no fruit. So it's necessary for you and I, as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be in tune with the Spirit. Paul goes on in that section in Galatians and says, Live by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And he says, the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, he said. So they are opposites. And so they are opposing one another. They work against each other. It can never be a both and, it must always be an either or. And each one of those seeks to win out. But it's the spirit that keeps working so that you and I live more and more under his influence so that we produce more and more of that kind of fruit. And Paul says you can, you can definitely see where you are because he describes the sinful nature in this way. He says the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, faction, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And then he warns us and he says that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's quite a long list of all that. But then he goes on, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Each week, we're going to focus on one of those part of the truth. This evening, we're going to begin with peace. The word that is translated peace does not necessarily have to do with the fact that there is no war, the absence of war, no. Rather, it is more talking about the well-being of people. It's talking about their, their bodily health and the satisfaction that comes from both of those things. It can refer to a group of people who are enjoying prosperity. In our troubled world these days, it's not so easy for people to have this kind of peace. I mean, with the way the economy is, there's hardly any well-being and prosperity. One wonders whether your job is secure, that you will have it tomorrow. And those who have no job wonder if they're going to be able to find another one, or if they're going to be able to keep their house or keep their family. And all of this has a, a profound effect upon our relationships. Plus, it seems like we're living in an ever-increasing violent time, especially in our city. No one feels safe and secure because no neighborhood is free of it. And that too affects our attitude about our well-being and our prosperity. So really, there isn't much peace to be had today. But the true peace, the peace that Paul is talking about, comes from God. And it comes only from God. It comes from the reality that God loves us and cares for us. That he is the one who seeks us out. Who seeks to reestablish the relationship with us after we have sinned and gone astray. He is the one who pursues us and who seeks to restore us after we have ignored him and got our own way. He is the one who sent his son here to remove everything that separated us from him. He did that in his suffering and his death, removing everything so that there is nothing that stands in our way. And now because of that, you and I can be found in human beings, should be found in the one who is standing. But thus, as a result of all of that, you and I can have that feeling of peace. And all of that comes from the fact that the Holy Spirit lives within us. And the Spirit can produce fruit, this kind of fruit, in us. And we can live having peace in our lives. But as Jesus says, that peace comes not from the world. It comes from God. And it comes from what God has done and what God continues to do for us. And it comes from the fact that God is with us no matter what. And it comes from knowing that he is concerned about us in our daily life. I think the Jews of Jesus say understood this piece, perhaps better than we do. Because they often spoke about the shalom of God. That's the peace of God. The state of well-being that came from from God's care and God's company. In fact, they often greeted each other with that thing. And they, they left one another's company with that word. They wished it upon their brothers and sisters. 